Okay, so I need to draw you a diagram. So, my claim is that thus far our lives look like this. If you are given a differential equation, you have some options, right? Those options thus far are something like What techniques do you guys have? <laughs> like, if you're given an arbitrary second order differential equation, what do you do? There's three separation of variables. Okay, so you might try separation of variables, right? On a second order? You might try it. <laughs> right? Or if one of the if one of the pieces is missing, like if you have y double prime equals y, right? You can get away with a little separation. So some of them you might be able to separate. That's a cool thought. What other methods do you have for solving? And OK, skip second order. What methods do you have for solving differential equations at all? Yeah, so in first order land, you also have variation of parameters, right? Uh, let's see, you also have this thing about like guessing e to the rx, right? Yeah, what do you call that? Is that method of undetermined coefficients? I'd call that guessing. <laughs> Sweet. So there are other things you could guess, right? Like your first guesses might be e to the rx, that's a good one. If that one doesn't seem to work, you might guess uh, like cosine x or sine x. Right, like those are reasonable guesses. Uh, you might guess like polynomial type things, right? Like you might guess a plus bx plus cx squared or something. Um, if you were thinking a little bit, you might guess a t to the r given an appropriate form, right? You just like throw stuff at the wall and see if it sticks, basically. Guessing is not a traditionally good method, but it is one that solves a crap load of differential equations. <laughs> right? Okay, so these are basically the techniques I have right now. Um, another one is I could just notice something. <laughs> that one's really hard. Right? You could, like, if you had, for instance, a first order differential equation. You could notice that it looks like something in the back of the calculus book and then like start differentiating similar things and just like see if you could get it to fit. That would be a little bit like guesswork, but much like maybe guided guesswork. <laughs> Educated guessing. Yeah. Educated, some might call it. Okay, so that's what we currently have, right? So I'm going to give you guys a new arrow, which is really cool. So instead of going to calculus land, right, like this land over here, I'm going to call this calculus land. Sounds like a theme park. Yeah. It is like a really dorky theme park, yeah. You can instead get off on the blue arrow called the Laplace transform. <laughs> Sounds smart. Which will take you to a separate magical land, which I prefer to call really hard algebra land. I thought that was calc land. <laughs> no. No, you haven't seen hard algebra yet. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but I don't have to do any freaking calculus. Like Laplace transforms are a magical thing. You take a differential equation, you slap this big fat L on it, and all of a sudden you are presented with a really hard algebra problem. Now, the problem is that from calculus land, where do you usually get to? Algebra land. algebra land. Yeah, okay, so you, you make a jaunt through kind of hard algebra land, and then you get to the solution, right? Mm -hmm. The 
Okay, and this is the, the part of Laplace transforms that are tough, are right here in algebra land. But I don't need to outline the tricks in a really hard algebra land, because you know most of them. Yeah, just algebra. <laughs> yeah, okay, so algebra. There are, my claim is there are two tricks in really hard algebra land. I guess I should know. The two tricks in really hard algebra land are things you've forgotten about manipulating fractions. Oh, boy. And I'll concede that they're scary fractions. Right, they're fractions made out of rational functions. Or, sorry, they're rational functions, right? So they're fractions made out of polynomials. So, scary fractions. And the other thing is the only little bit of magic you know. What's the only thing if it's magic? You guys who have had me well, class fraction before? Decomposition. Partial fraction decomposition is the only thing that's actually magic, and it's the only <laughs> thing you need. <laughs> so you're going to have to do some scary fraction stuff and some partial fraction decomposition stuff. And that is going to let you take this little ride to the solution, which is the inverse Laplace transform. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So, what's the point of Laplacing it if we inverse Laplace it? So you Laplace it, you massage the algebra, and then you inverse Laplace it, and that will straight up get you the solution. It's basically like a substitution. Let's do it. Yeah, so this is why I was drawing U substitution on that last problem in blue, right? Mm -hmm. Because U substitution is basically the same trick, right? It takes you from a hard calculus problem to an easier calculus problem, and then back. On this one, the back substitute part gets really gnarly, and that algebra is a little harder. But you don't have to do any calculus. So there's no derivatives or no integrals? OK, with one small exception. To get back out of this thing, sometimes you have to do an integral. To get into it, it's kind of an integral, but mostly you just look it up in a table and then look it back up in the table the other way. Right? There's one little trick that'll involve an integral here called convolution, but let's skip that for right now. Cool? Does the idea make sense? Yeah. Okay.